Hello everybody, in this video we're going to take a further look at Maya's paint effects. In previous videos we looked at uh, the paint effects by creating a NURBS curve. And then going to Generate, Curve Utilities, Attach Brush to Curves. Using this method, we created this very simple geometry, which we later converted to a polygon mesh, and uh, made a neon sign. Now, uh, with this method, we created a NURBS curve and attached a brush stroke to it. However, we can eliminate that whole step of creating a NURBS curve by going to Generate, Paint Effects Tool. And if I select that Paint Effects Tool, I can simply draw in my scene and create other uh, paint effects in Maya. Now, the two strokes that we're looking at here are the most basic of the uh, paint effect strokes in Maya. Uh, we actually have a number of different uh, strokes that we can select from. And to do that, you simply go to Generate, Get Brush. This will open up the Content Browser. And in the Content Browser, under Paint Effects, found here, you'll see that there's in fact a number of different subfolders with a number of different um, paint effects that you can select from. For instance, we have our airbrush effects uh, that are here, but we also have interesting ones such as animal, city mesh, clouds, and so on. I'm going to go to animal and select this one here, the snake brown. Here you'll get a visual indication of what this stroke should look like. And with it selected, let's see what it does. Now, upon initially looking at it, it doesn't look very impressive. Uh, but what you need to understand is that some of these paint effects, to really get a good sense of what they look like, you'll need to render them first. So I'm going to change over to my Maya software render and then we'll do a quick render and see what this paint effect looks like. And as you can see, as the name suggests, it looks like snake skin. Let's take a look at another brush. Once again, I'll return to Generate, Get Brush, opening up my content browser. Um, I really recommend spending some time playing around with these different uh, paint effect uh, strokes here. You can see that there's a lot of them, uh, some very interesting ones, including some very unusual ones as well, such as pretzel, mussel, noodles, um, pasta long. Let's try pasta long. So I'll select that and once again draw in my viewport. And with this one you see that you actually do get a little bit better of a visual representation of what it looks like, unlike the snakeskin one. Uh, and if we render it out, you'll see that we get these pasta noodles here. We'll take a look at another one. I'll go to Generate, Get Brush, and this time we'll pick one of these uh, grasses brushes. You can see there's a number of them. Uh, let's try out, we'll try out the, um, oh, which one? There's so many to choose from. We'll try Grass Carpet. And once again, I'll do a uh, stroke in my scene. 
and we'll get this grass effect here. Render it out, and here's what we have. As you can see, this could be a great way to really um, make your environments um, more full, more rich using these paint effects. In addition, we can also go back to any of these other paint effects that we have in here and we can uh, further adjust them. Uh, for instance, if I select this snake skin one that you need to render to actually see, uh, we could come over here to our attribute editor and we can change such things as the brush profile. Uh, we can come in here and change additional properties such as the uh, sample density to make it denser or less dense. Uh, another very useful one actually, I'm going to return to this tab, the snake brown tab, the global scale. This could be a very useful one, uh, especially with some of the other brushes uh, where you can either make the uh, stroke larger or smaller. Um, another thing I'd like to show you is how we can select one of these brushes here, this uh, grass brush that uh, we tried out a few moments ago. And I'm going to return to generate. And what I'm going to do is say get settings from selected stroke. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the properties of this paint effect stroke and then if I select any one of these other pain effect strokes that I have in here, I can come in here and go to generate and then say apply settings to selected strokes. So it remembers the stroke that I um, told it to get and then by clicking on apply, it'll apply that stroke to, um, to this pain effect. Now, this is not the effect I was expecting uh, I'm really not sure why it did that. Let's try it with one of these other ones and see if we get a better result. So I'll select this one. Uh, I should still have, just to make sure, we'll go ahead and select this again and, and we'll say generate, uh, get settings from selected stroke, select the stroke, and then we'll come over here once again to generate and say apply to selected strokes. And that looks better. I'm not sure why we got this strange result with this one. Let's go ahead and select it and just try applying it again and see if we get a different result. Generate, and we'll go ahead and just say apply to selected stroke. And no, it didn't change it. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, let's try it on this one. We'll try it on our uh, pasta here. Select that stroke, go to generate, and we'll say apply settings to selected stroke. And also that one worked. That looks like some nice lush grass there. Uh, perhaps we'll do it to this one as well. Generate, apply settings to stroke, and it worked fine on that one as well. Again, I'm not sure why it didn't work on this particular stroke. Uh, maybe because it's the curve. Oh, I believe it's because of the curve that I drew. That's probably the problem. Uh, here, let's see what happens if I rebuild this curve. I'm going to go to Curves, and we'll say Rebuild. In this case, the curve is only six spans, three degrees. I'm going to go ahead and make it, oh, we'll try 120 and apply that. And no, that didn't fix it either. So again, I'm really not sure what's going on here. I'll have to play around with that a little bit more. So I spent a couple moments uh, troubleshooting this unusual one that seemed not to work as well as these other ones. It's the paint effect that I derived from the curve that I created earlier. I'm going to delete that and we'll just rebuild it again. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that this is the, um, the paint effect stroke that I'm going to be using. So I'll go back to generate and say get settings from selected stroke and then I'll select my curve. I'll go to generate curve utilities and attach brush to curves. And this gets us most of the way there although what you'll notice is that we've got the density 
similar to these other examples. However, the brush stroke is not oriented properly. And when I did a little troubleshooting to figure this out, what I discovered was that under this tab, the stroke shape tab, uh, we've got, let me just collapse some of these so that we're not looking at as much stuff here. Uh, we've got this section here where it says normal direction. And what we need to do is tell it, in this case, that Y is up. So if I just click on use normal, Y will become up with this particular brush stroke. And now it works just like the other ones. Uh, let's go ahead and try one more brush before we wrap up this video. Uh, I'm going to go to Generate, Get Brush, and we'll select another brush here. Uh, perhaps we'll try one of the flowers. Uh, and I think I'll try out this Sunflower brush here. So I'll select it, close this. It's now in, I guess we could call it our clipboard. Uh, so if I were to draw in here, we'll get this, these sunflowers. You can see them over here, or I'll draw some over here. Uh, I'll go ahead and select this stroke again here. And we'll go ahead and apply it to uh, apply this brush to this stroke. So it'll no longer be grass, but it'll be these sunflowers instead. So I'll once again, go to generate and a apply to selected strokes and now we have a bunch of sunflowers in our scene as well if we render it out this is what we have now if you need to set it back to let's say just that very generic default brush stroke uh, what you can do is go to generate reset reset template brush found here you can see now that if I select my brush tool and I draw, I have that very simple brush stroke. And I can also go back to any of these strokes, generate, and say uh, apply setting to selected strokes. And now this returns to being just a very generic looking paint effect brush stroke. So as you learn these paint effects and how to use them, I recommend first just sitting down and playing with them uh, and just exploring them. There's so many to explore. Some of them are quite absurd and, and weird. They're fun. Uh, you might struggle to actually find a real use for them, but there's still a lot of fun to play around with. So again, the way I would uh, start exploring these techniques is just going to generate get brush, uh, pick some brushes that you might be interested in exploring. Uh, we've got various animal, city mesh, and so on. I, I recommend taking a look at every one of these folders and seeing what's in there and trying out a number of these different techniques. For instance, I might come in here and select city mesh and we'll try out the uh, Manhattan brush here. And if I uh, paint in my scene here, you'll see that I can very quickly create this cityscape here. Uh, and if we render that out using Maya software, you'll see that these buildings even have a texture on them. I might try some of the other brushes as well. So once again, on a very simple level, just go to get brush. Uh, maybe try another one of these city meshes, and we could try town with what looks like smaller buildings here. And maybe add some suburbs to my cityscape here. Try another brush, go to get brush, and maybe we'll try some of these effects in electrical. I'm going to try out this a lightning white. Maybe we'll paint it here where it'll be, let's say, uh, lightning striking maybe some of these tall buildings here. So I'll just draw a stroke here. 
Now, these lightning strikes, you can see them here in my scene. They look kind of small relative to the building. So if we render it out, uh, let's see what we get. You can kind of see them in there. Uh, one thing I'm going to do as I explore these brushes is with this brush selected, I'll come over here to the attribute editor, uh, to this lightning white tab, and that's where I'm going to adjust the global scale. We'll make the global scale larger to make the lightning strikes larger. Notice that you could do that for any of these brushes. Come in here for global scale and we can increase or decrease the scale of uh, this brush here. And let's see how that looks. And there we go. So again, the way I'd really strongly recommend that you play around with this tool is just sit down and spend a couple hours just exploring it and having fun with it. Don't try to make anything in particular, just see what's actually available there. Anyway, I hope that this video has been helpful for you and thank you for watching.